Dude. What's up everybody and welcome back to Heels and Quads. I am Levi, not joined by Tommy because I'm continuing my Iron Maiden ranking series. So let's just get straight into it because today is number 14 and today's kind of a juicy one. Number 14, you can probably spot on camera right now, but I will go ahead and hold it up. Fear of the Dark. Iron Maiden's Fear of the Dark is, it's a bit controversial that it's in this spot for me because I really like this album and I think it is a really strong album. As always, when you stack it up against all these others, we're talking about 17 albums here and Iron Maiden's discography. There are a lot that are better or more stacked records and a lot of set list classics or a lot of nostalgia. Well, Fear of the Dark carries that as well, but Fear of the Dark's a bit different. Fear of the Dark marks the more experimental period for Iron Maiden, kind of that 90s fashion for all these bands. You know, you have you have so many guys who came up in the 80s and in the 90s, they change just a little bit or a lot or become a totally different kind of group. Fear of the Dark came out May 11th, 1992. And as I said, it's, it's more of that experimental period for Iron Maiden. We're coming off of No Prayer for the Dying. In that record, we kind of get what starts the experimental period, but mostly just in Bruce's vocal delivery as he gets a little bit more of that growly kind of, ah, ah. he's got it in a couple tracks here. Most notably to start off, Be Quick or Be Dead. <laughs> Just a really fast, thrashy track. Be quick, I'll be dead. He's very aggressive, and the track is very aggressive. One of the standouts of the album, and there are a lot of good tracks on this record. Again, stacking it up against some older ones and some of the more classic Maiden records, it's a bit hard. Even some of the newer ones, the 2000s onward, Iron Maiden really got better in the 2000s. Fear of the Dark also marks the first album without Derek Riggs as the artist, as Melvin Grant was the artist who was chosen. They took a different route with Eddie. They kind of wanted less of a comic book-ish character, and they wanted, like, more realism, I guess. So, Eddie coming off of a tree is a bit more real, I guess, than a comic book character, but still cool. This is definitely one of my favorite Iron Maiden album covers. This is also the last album to feature Martin Birch as the producer before he would retire. He was throughout the entire 80s and up to this point. From Here to Eternity. Yeah, from here to eternity. Spoke of it on the last ranking, No Proof for the Dying, that Hooks and You is the third installment in the Charlotte to Harlot series. From Here to Eternity is the fourth and so far final installment, Charlotte to Harlot, 22 Acacia Avenue, Hooks and You, From Here to Eternity. Also get Wasting Love. Wasting Love! Rare ballad from the guys in Iron Maiden, but it is cool, their take on a ballad. Again, trying new things for the 90s. The record also has a lot more beef to it, just in general, it's very, it's very thick and dense and just chuggy and kind of kind of darker and heavier, and I think that's why I also like it, because it ushers in that new period, but that leads into the X Factor. On this record, you get quite a blend. Um, you get Be Quick or Be Dead as fast and thrashy. 
Wasting Loves, a ballad, the mid album, kind of rockers, a childhood end. Oh, 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 it just comes with nostalgia, even if it's the first time you've heard it, like the title, Childhood's End, a really epic uh, chorus, and the way that's all delivered is just, it's got this nostalgia factor just baked into it. Chains of Misery has a very crew esque chorus, Motley Crue. Speaking of, watch Tommy's Motley Crue ranking videos. But with the delivery of Chains of Misery, like the way they sing it is just, I don't know, it reminds me of Motley Crue. And it's plus it's very hair rocky. The Apparition is a straight up 70s, 80s rock track. Like just, it sounds like it would be something from that era, like, like an early Maiden song even. Like maybe it was something they dug out of their early days in the 1970s. Judas Be My Guide is a nice little sneaky banger at the end of the record, the third to last song. It's a really cool track. It could definitely come off as a single. And then, of course, to finish off the record, you have Fear the Dark. Fear the dark. Fear the dark. Goes on to be an iconic set list, must, part of the encore, or the end of the first part of the set leading to the encore. Crowd participation and Fear the Dark just off the charts. It's one of the coolest crowd participation songs you could ever hear or watch. If you've never seen Fear of the Dark live, you should absolutely watch that. The album is a standout classic, but it falls short in a few ways. So this is where it's tough, is for me, I think this album's better than where it ranks. If I'm ranking the records, I kind of have to do a bit of fan service here because Fear of the Dark, it's not a top 10 record. Let's put it that way. It's close, 14. 14 onward is kind of where we go like, okay, this is where it gets really hard. Like I said, the start of the video, you're putting this up against like the number of the beast, somewhere in time, peace of mind, power slave, all that stuff. It's really hard to stack this up against those. And it's the last Bruce album until Brave New World in 2000, until he would come back in 1999 to record Brave New World with the band, as well as Adrian Smith. That's when he comes back as 1999 with Bruce, because he did some solo stuff with Bruce throughout the 90s. This album perfectly leads into The X Factor, and Virtual Eleven kinda helps us get back to Brave New World, in a way. So this whole 90s period falls together in this weird chronological order that works. No Prayer for the Dying, Fear of the Dark, X Factor, and Virtual Eleven, which I've ranked all already. They're at the bottom of the list. None of them I hate, and I have to mention this every video because somebody will say, well, that's the greatest. Dude, what are you talking about, man? The X Factor is the best Iron Maiden album. Cool, if that's what you think, man, make your ranking. We all got a YouTube channel for a reason. Nobody said it yet, but so there's always that person out there that wants to say that. If you've never listened to Fear of the Dark, you absolutely should because this is a great record and this is where it starts getting fun. I'm kind of still fighting on number 13, but like I said, I think I know what's going there, but we'll see and you'll see soon. My favorite tracks off the record, Be Quick or Be Dead, Childhood's End, the Fugitive's really cool. Judas Be My Guide. Fear of the Dark, of course, the title track. There's none I hate. There's no tracks I hate here. And similar to No Prayer for the Dying, I don't hate any of those tracks, but this kind of gets the No Prayer for the Dying effect where you really have one song on it that is just stellar and has that star power. And then I believe it was From Here to Eternity and Be Quick or Be Dead would kind of be on set lists as well. Really, aside from Fear of the Dark, the title track, nothing is on a set list from this anymore. And that's not what I base my records solely on, is what's on a set list still, but you kind of have to look at the star power of the record as a whole, and Fear of the Dark just doesn't have a lot of it. And people do remember it, too, as Bruce's last album until he would return, and the band kind of taking a different avenue with sound and all that stuff. That's my ranking. Number 14, Fear of the Dark. Patreon.com slash Heels and Quads if you want to be a part of the Patreon. We're going to have cool stuff coming up over there as we grow. Like and subscribe. Like the video. Subscribe to the channel. We're over a 1,000 now. Never thought we'd really be here, but that's pretty sweet. And Tommy's got a lot of his rankings going on. He had the Motley Crue, the Van Halen, all the Kiss stuff is on there. I got my Maiden going. I'm not going to get ahead of myself, but I know who I'm going to rank next after Iron Maiden. But... Let me do 13 more videos, and if I can be that disciplined to do that, then we'll do some more rankings. Copperjohnsbeard.com, use coupon code Heels and Quads in all caps to check out, saves 15% on your order. Until next time, tell your friends, tell your enemies. Appreciate you. We'll see you then. Run to the